Ah, cut. Oh, man. Oh, no. oh God. Yeah, yeah. So as I'm running this marathon, there's just hurdles being thrown right in front of me. And meanwhile, my butter's on the stove. It's going to turn to brown butter, which I do not want. Oh, man. Oh, no. Chopped is more than just a cooking show. It's the casual viewer's peek into the world of professional cooks. Yet only 37% of the contestants have been female and rarely do they see the finish line. Working as a chef means working in a male-dominated industry. Only around 20% of Americans' restaurants are led by women. Just ask Chef Charlotte Langley about her experience in the restaurant. I'll tell you, I was doing a culinary competition, so they asked me to come back to PEI or come back to this place. Yeah. And compete against all these other chefs. Uh, the judge came to me afterwards and they're like, so you lost? I was like, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, well, you lost because you're a woman. Oh. I was like, excuse me? As the largest distributor of information on professional cooking, it's imperative to question the Food Network's influence on gender norms and cooking stereotypes. Chop's character introductions may seem short and insignificant, however, the Food Network's production decisions exhibit how the channel continues to perpetuate the false narrative of the restaurant as most fitting for males. Today's analysis video zeroes in on a special episode, Million Dollar Meals featuring Madeline D, the only female competitor. There's some bad stuff in those baskets. Yeah. Luxurious, decadent, opulent. Uh, yeah. These baskets are packed with million dollar ingredients. First time we have ever had white truffles. Yes. Who will put their money where their mouth is? Ooh, baby. And who will be shopped? Oh, my God. Time to welcome four ambitious chefs. First, here's Chef Chris Brugman. Next up, here's Chef Madeline D. And then there's Chef Jonathan Scallion. And finally, we have Chef Johnny Church. Immediately, the male chefs are presented as more qualified than D. They both flaunt their elite restaurants and positions. I'm the executive sous chef of Mountain Shadows Resort in Scottsdale, Arizona. Being a boutique hotel, we provide a lot of luxury to our clients. I don't brag, but at this point in my career, I'm at the top of my game. I'm the executive chef of Oriole at Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, Nevada. Being in one of the top restaurants in Las Vegas. For Dee, the producers decide to focus on her web series. It's about cooking and entertaining. Dee explains her restaurant specializes in... course tasting menu. Implying a formal nature to her cooking with similar, if not greater, expertise as the previous chefs, the producers choose to deflect attention away from her qualifications, creating an inevitable sense of inferiority. There's a clear power struggle among each male character to improve their credibility and display their cooking proficiency. The result becomes an exclusionary activity where those deemed lesser are discouraged or even unable to share their backgrounds. The producers created domestic versus professional gender binary. G is presented within a house and her character intro focuses on her web series which also happens to take place within a domestic setting. Two of the other male chefs are filmed working in prestigious kitchens, while the last male calls himself a one-man restaurant. Female chefs have been upheld by generational sexist norms as domestic cooks simply providing for families or making basic homely meals. Dee's contrasting environment perpetuates the notion that cooking is a man's activity when it requires extravagant ingredients or highly skilled dishes. All of the men are shown slicing with large knives. Yet D is seen with a rolling pin and a plastic spatula. This constructs male chefs as the main users of power tools, outlandish cooking gadgets, and gargantuan grills. The producers of CHOP make a cognizant decision to market the show as a competition emphasizing speed, athleticism, and stamina. The bigger and stronger cooking utilities displayed alongside the males are seen as non-domestic tools that require specialized training. This conveys the male chefs as the ideal candidates to satisfy the show's typical winner. D is immediately downgraded as her introduction fails to incorporate any of these characteristics. The first scene in the introduction shows the first male contestant throwing a large piece of ribs into an oven. The second male contestant makes largely seafood proteins. When Madeline is interviewed, her dishes consist mainly of vegetable and dessert courses. Meat functions as a system of hegemonic masculinity, which legitimizes male chefs as dominant and female chefs as subordinate. Only men are given the privilege of handling main course proteins such as ribs, scallions, or steak. Obviously, this logic is immediately disproven in round two, 
when all the judges are quick to compliment Madeline's Iberico ham and few stag curry sauce. I love this sauce. I like the taste a lot. It's one of my favorite bites of the, of the first round. Thank you. Through the introductions, Dia is immediately relegated to the simpler vegetable dishes or desserts, which are considered sides to the main course. The chopped introductions are lopsided. They display female and male chefs as separate professions. As the conglomerate of cooking shows, Food Network and other cooking television must do a better job of adhering to a model inclusive of non-male professional chefs. Their shows are watched by millions of fans and spread throughout social media, making them the leading influencers of our society's understanding of chefs, portraying professional cooking as dominated by the over-competitive, degrading, and masculine atmosphere creates a discouraging environment for the participation of non-male cooks. With Food Network's immense popularity, shows like Chopped have a responsibility to uphold diverse and equal values throughout the production and marketing of their content.